Raymond Dart was a college professor and department head at the University of Witwatersrand in Johannesburg, South Africa. Dart is credited with having discovered the Tong child in 1924. It was the first Australopithecine ever discovered. Quote, it was the greatest paleoanthropological discovery of all time. End quote. Lee Berger. At the time, only Neanderthals, Homo erectus, and Cro-Magnon bones had been found. Dart's Early Life, Australia, England, and South Africa. Dart was a native Australian. He served as a captain in the Medical Corps in the British Army. After the war, Dart attended University College in London. After graduation, Dart was tasked with building an anatomy department at the University of Witwatersrand. He was not happy about being sent to what he regarded as the outback of South Africa. Dart had also taken charge of the medical division at the university. He found the facilities in utter shambles. His predecessor had to leave in a hurry as a result of a sordid sex scandal. Dart had told his students to bring him any interesting specimens that they had found to discuss in class. One of his students had a friend whose father worked as a foreman at a rock quarry in the village of Tom. Josephine Salmons brought Dart a baboon skull that had been sitting on his fireplace mantle. Days later, Dart took a day trip to the quarry. He asked the foreman to send him anything else he found that might be of interest. A most inopportune time. It was wedding day at the Dart household. Dart and his wife Dora were hosting their best friend's marriage ceremony. Guests were arriving. Dart and the groom were in the back room tussling with their tuxedos. There was a knock on the door. A delivery man had brought a crate from the quarry. Dart couldn't resist. He took the crate to his private chambers. He pried it open. More baboon bones, but then buried on the bottom, the tong child. The ceremony did proceed, albeit 10 minutes late. A new genus. After the wedding, Dart became a recluse. He retired to his private study and would not see any visitors. For six weeks, Dart arduously picked at the rock and case in the skull. He used various instruments, including his wife's sewing needles. Dart finally got the skull cleared of the limestone. He typed up a paper with details on the skull, including measurements and his analysis. He sent the paper off to the journal Nature. Dart, the specimen is of importance because it exhibits an extinct race of apes, intermediate between living anthropoids and man. I propose Australopithecus africanus. The paper was not well received. The London Anthropological Society was highly skeptical. Sir Richard Keith called Dart's hypothesis preposterous. At the time, England's anthropologists were obsessed with the Piltdown Man, which was later exposed as a giant hoax. They disregarded Africa as playing a central role in human origins. This was despite the fact that Darwin himself suggested African origins given the close morphological similarities between humans and African primates. Dart made multiple appeals to the Anthropological Society to no avail. 
During one trip for a conference in London, Dart's wife Dora went out shopping. She forgot the Tong child's skull in the back seat of a taxi. The skull was in a box. It was driven around London for hours. Eventually the driver got curious. He turned it into the police unharmed. A year later, Dart sent Dora back to England. They were divorced soon thereafter. Australopithecines. In 1934, Dart's friend Robert Broom, an eccentric but determined medical doctor, discovered two Australopithecine skeletons at Swordcrons. By the 1950s, the Australopiths had won their place in the human family tree. Australopithecines date from 4.6 million years ago to undetermined. There are 10 Australopithecus species, including Africanus, Afarensis, and Australopithecus sediba. Brain size ranges from 380 to 500 cubic centimeters, larger than a chimpanzee at 350 cc. Australopithecine morphology, four foot tall, 70 pounds, deep rib cage, upright, mostly bipedal. The striking feature that distinguishes all Australopithecines is the long arms in relation to the body size an adaption for climbing. Australopith's ancestor, Artipithecus, had similar body proportions. Donald Johansson discovered Lucy, Australopithecus afarensis, in Ethiopia in 1974. Lucy is a 40% complete skeleton. The species was named after the beetles, Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds. Australopithecus to genus Homo. Quote, 50 years after the recognition of the species Homo habilis as the earliest known representative of our genus, the origin of Homo remains clouded. End quote. ASU Professor William Kimball. Lee Berger's son, Matthew, discovered Australopithecus sediba at Malapa in 2008. Eventually, two nearly complete skeletons were uncovered. Australopithecus sediba has a more homo sapien-like dentition and pelvis bone, though the brain size remains quite small at 440 cc. Quote, the many advanced features found in the brain and body, along with the earlier date, make it the best candidate ancestor for our genus Homo." End quote. Vitz, University Professor Lee Berger. From the Smithsonian, these links indicate that Australopithecus sediba may reveal information about the origins and ancestor of the genus Homo. Quote, Australopithecus sediba may reveal information about the origins and ancestor of the genus Homo. End quote. Darts Australopithecus africanus to Berger's Australopithecus sediba to genus Homo. As Professor Berger so aptly stated, by opening that crate, Professor Raymond Dart may have made the most important discovery in all of paleoanthropology. Dart and Man the Hunter. Dart continued with his roles at university, but he suffered a tragedy on the home front when his daughter, with his new wife, was born with cerebral palsy. Dart, the trained medical professional, threw himself into more philosophical pursuits. Together with his protege, a young Philip Tobias, they launched a field of science known as racial typology. Tobias had been on numerous excursions with Lewis and Mary Leakey, including Olduvai Gorge, where Homo habilis was discovered. Dart and Tobias were convinced Afro-Pygmies and Khoisan 
tribes were of separate lineage. They were determined to prove that Africa was the home of the missing link. Tobias toured southern Africa, taking cranial measurements to prove their case. In a strange twist of events, Dart had linked up with popular author and Broadway playwright Robert Ardrey. They began a collaboration. Ardrey had written a series of books in the late 1950s, positing the theory of Man the Hunter. Anthropologist Helen Fisher. Dart's idea caught on fast. Robert Ardrey, soon dubbed Man the Killer Ape, who appeared on the savannas to start killing for a living. Dart even suggested that man was capable of decapitation and cannibalism, though he believed the extreme violence was limited to certain Africans. Famed movie producer Stanley Kubrick was an adherent of Robert Archer's works, and as the Washington Post cites, he even borrowed from his book African Genesis. Kubrick credited Dart and Ardrey for the opening scene in Space Odyssey 2001. According to the UK Guardian, John Lennon was addicted to the movie. It also inspired David Bowie to write his monster hit, Starman. The idea that violence underpins the human intellect is based on the ideas of anthropologist Raymond Dart, which were popularized in the 1960s by the writer Richard Ardrey, Robin McKee, science writer. Quote, they don't reflect current thinking. Bones may have been used as tools, not as clubs, though it's still one of my favorite movies. End quote. Chris Stringer, UK Guardian. Correction for Dr. Stringer. Only left anthropologists reject Raymond Dart's theories of human origins. Classic paleoanthropology is back. Thank you for watching. Remember to tell others about the channel. See you soon.